existence of terrorist websites is indisputable. They are plain to see, and the hundreds of groups funding them hail from all over the world. The International Center for Political Violence and Terrorism Research monitors such terrorist activities online. The problem, it says, isn't so much the Internet, rather the easy access and anonymity. But can access to such terrorist websites be traced? Well, I talked to a computer security expert to find out. An Internet cafe, it is a place where anyone can just walk in and out, use the net, and simply walk off. Imagine if a terrorist or a terrorist supporter used an Internet cafe to surf the net, he could be anywhere in the world. And he could use a computer anonymously and walk away after a few minutes. If authorities want to find out who he is, would they be able to? It depends on the network access that they have. For example, if they log on from a cyber cafe, it pretty much depends if the cyber cafe deployed a monitoring system, where it's through a web surveillance camera uh, or identity, uh, identity mm -hmm. uh, card that they have to produce to the cyber cafe owner. Mm -hmm. They may be able to track back who was using a particular computer to access to a certain website. I spoke with the Singapore country manager of U.S.-based computer security company, Fortinet. He told me that just like other suspicious virtual characters, terrorists and their supporters may feel safe in logging online, but what they don't know is that they actually leave virtual footprints. First of all, when you log onto the Internet, you will be given an IP address. And this IP address is usually given by the Internet Service Provider or ISP. If you log on in the office, this IP address usually is given by the server in your office, and the server will have a log. At that particular time, this IP address is given to which computer? Okay, and then the next step. When you access the Internet, the server, the destination server, will log the IP address of your ISP or your office. Hence, we can track at that particular time which IP address is accessing this information, and then we can cross-check with the log that taken from your ISP or your server. At that particular time, which computer is using that IP address that has been leased? For example, this is one of the sample of a server log, a website log. We can see that uh, this visitor coming from Singapore mm. using a Singnet ISP. He was referred by Google, he or she. At the moment, we don't know yet. Yeah. Okay, He was searching for the term buy targeted traffic. Okay. Or maybe he could just uh, search like, uh, I want to buy a weapon, or he's uh, looking for explosive, right? We can track this. Currently, the use is offline. This is determined by the, uh, the activities, number of visits, uh, and also uh, the timestamp. This is most important. The global reach of the Internet is perfect for terrorists to spread their message online. For instance, a website set up in the Middle East can easily be accessed by anyone from any point in the world. And if people in Singapore were logging onto this website, would it be then possible to find out where exactly the site is based? Okay, first of all, if the website is set up in the Middle East by a Middle Eastern people and accessed by people in Singapore, that can be easily identified because all computers that connected to the Internet will have an IP address. An IP address will be allocated to the ISPs. Okay. Each IP address already allocated to a certain region. So based on the IP address, we can tell that this website is located in the Middle East. And hence, somebody in Singapore accessing this website will have to go to ISP in Singapore. So provided this ISP have a monitoring system that will flag alert if somebody access to this particular IP address, then we will know and we can collect the log who are the people in Singapore who are accessing this IP address. In the past, authorities tried to shut down some of these terror websites. But because the net is so fluid and easy to manipulate, it is so easy for terrorists to have their websites up and running again within hours of a shutdown. With so many web hosting um, operators, they provide a free hosting sometimes, supported by uh, advertisement. It's fairly easy for everybody to sign up a website 
and post the content over there. And because the website is just basically a file, they can easily back up to their computer and post mm -hmm. it to other websites. Mm -hmm. So this uh, process of signing up a new website can be done by anybody, regardless of the place, regardless of the time. So I can sign up a website in USA, and vice versa, maybe somebody in the Middle East can sign up a website in Singapore. So it doesn't matter anymore mm -hmm. where they are. And is there any way to close them down? Usually, uh, web hosting companies, they don't really check on the content of the websites that they are hosting until somebody flagged it out or somebody reported that there is an inappropriate content, then they will shut it out. Mm -hmm. But at that time, maybe this guy already signed up with so many other websites While the wild, wild west nature of the net enables terrorists to potentially communicate their ideology and recruit new sympathizers, technology at the end of the day also enables experts to track them down. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. From all of us here at Insight, thanks so much for watching. I'm Chloe Cho and I'll see you again next week. Asia, a network of Media Corp News.